What's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching the video. We should have a doozy for you today because once again uh, we have some shotguns out here. So you guys have seen me shoot pump action shotguns quite a few times on the channel. I love pump shotguns and that's actually all I've ever really owned. Um, I've never owned a semi-auto and I don't have a ton of experience with them. I love them. Uh, they're just quite a bit more expensive and I've only shot them probably three or four times. But recently, once again, Turtle Lake Tactical hit me up and offered to send me a very cool semi-automatic shotgun to bring out here and compare with the pump that we have. So a few days ago, this is what arrived. This is the 12 gauge semi-automatic Remington Versamax. And this thing is a beauty. I did not expect it to be this nice. It just looks awesome. Um, it feels like really high quality and I'm excited to shoot it. And once again, we have the Benelli Supernova 12 gauge pump out here to compare with the semi-auto. Now, like I said, I don't have a ton of experience with the semi-autos. I've always kind of subscribed to the pump action shotgun for like home defense because you hear a lot of stuff about semi-autos having reliability problems with all the different kinds of ammo that's out there for shotguns. It makes sense that it would be tough to get a semi-auto to cycle all of those reliably. But apparently the Remington Versamax has a special gas operating system that allows it to kind of fluctuate the amount of gas that it gives the gun based off the kind of ammo that you put in it. So if that's true, uh, that is amazing. It also claims to be one of the lightest recoiling semi-automatic shotguns in the world. Now, semi-autos usually recoil a little bit less anyway, uh, but if what I read is true, this thing feels about like shooting a 20 gauge. So I'm excited to test this out because pump action shotguns are definitely not the softest shooting guns. <laughs> so I don't know how well you guys could see this when I showed it to you on the table, but just to give you another look at it, like I said, it is a very nice looking gun. It definitely surprised me. It's a long barrel. I think it's probably a 26 inch barrel. I wish it was a little bit shorter, but the Benelli is 28 and this is a little shorter than that. You can see it's got that tactical breech looking choke on there. Just a really cool looking gun. So I'm not sure what the capacity is. I guess we'll find out together. I'm gonna go ahead and load it up with some bird shot to start. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, good grief, nine, nine plus one. <laughs> That's crazy. My Benelli is four plus one, I think. Wow. All right. First shots on the steel. I have not fired this gun at all. I wanted my first time to be on camera. So let's see how it shoots. Wow. <laughs> that is a humongous difference. It barely moves you. It does not feel like a 12 gauge shotgun. That's incredible. Cycled the bird shot just fine. You can see it locked our bolt back. Wow. That is amazing. That's definitely softer than I thought it was going to be. Like I said, I haven't shot a ton of these, but I bet you'd be hard pressed to find something that's softer shooting than that. That is incredible. I'm going to go ahead and load up four or five more and try some rapid fire on that steel. After this, I'll show you the Benelli and we'll try and get maybe a side shot to see um, how big that recoil difference is. It's a heavy gun, by the way. It's not a, a lightweight gun. Um, it's similar to the Benelli, uh, maybe a little bit heavier, but it feels really high quality. So, all right, let's try these as fast as we can. That's amazing. <laughs> that is incredible. I've never shot a 12 gauge shotgun that feels like that. I'm not a big dude. I'm, you know, 5'10", 5'11", maybe 160 pounds. So shotguns kind of kick me a little bit. This does not. It, feel, it feels less than a 20 gauge to me. I have that Remington 870. It's obviously a small 20 gauge, but that thing definitely kicks harder than this is kicking with these little, you know, birdshot loads. I might have to end up buying one of these. I think he said they're between 1,000 and 1,500, depending on what kind you get. Maybe you could find one for a little bit cheaper. But if I can save the money up, I think it's definitely worth it. All right, I'm gonna grab the Benelli here and we'll do five of these on the steel just so you guys can see how dramatic the difference is. 
I will say I love how that shell lifter stays up on the Benelli because you don't pinch your thumb like you do on the Remingtons. All right, five rounds in the Benelli. Just a much harder punch into the shoulder. Obviously this is, you know, bird shot, so you're not getting like kicked back real hard like you do with uh, slugs and stuff like that. But still, it definitely feels, I would say almost twice as harsh as that Versamax does. It's just a much harder punch to the shoulder. So very interesting. So I wanna try some buckshot in the Versamax. This is number four buck, 27 pellets, I believe. And it definitely recoils quite a bit harder than that number eight bird shot we were shooting. So let's see how this feels. I only put four of them in there. I don't wanna go through all my buckshot because this thing holds 10 rounds or something, but four, number four buckshot rounds. I don't know if you saw that. I wanted to pump the gun. I'm so used to the pumps that I kind of forgot I was shooting a semi-auto, but uh, that was still pretty soft shooting. Not a big difference from the number eight shot. I wonder if maybe that has something to do with the gas system that we talked about. And because it kind of knows what you're shooting through it, it gives more or less depending on the ammo and compensates for the recoil that way. I don't know, but that did not feel like hardly any difference at all. So I wanna do a little experiment and really test out the reliability of this gas system. So we have four different kinds of shot shells here. We have the number eight bird shot, the number four buck shot, the Winchester, PDX-1 Defender, this is a one ounce slug with three double-lot buckshot pellets, and then we have a three inch Magnum double-lot buckshot load. And we're gonna shoot these in that order, and this should be kinda like the ultimate test for how this thing cycles this ammo. So, let's see. <laughs> wow, that was cool. I could feel the graduation as I went up from the bird shot, number four buck, slug, and then the double out buck at the very end. Uh, they just got stronger and stronger and stronger. Even the very last one, the three inch magnum uh, double out buck shot, didn't feel too powerful. It felt about like, you know, maybe a high brass bird shot would feel and the pump action shotgun. So definitely a humongous difference. So a shotgun video wouldn't be complete if we didn't take out some 12 ounce soda. So let's see if the Versamax can pass this test. Oh, I lost one. <laughs> well, we lost one, but I was able to take it out anyway. I switched back to the bird shot for that, and I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record with this, but I don't know how else to say it. It's literally shocking, <laughs> the recoil on this thing, especially when you're shooting those little target loads. I don't know what to compare it to. It feels like, kind of like an AK or something, like definitely does not feel like a 12 gauge shotgun. And the difference between this and the pump is dramatic. I'm literally blown away by this thing. I know I haven't shot a ton of semi-autos, but it's hard for me to believe that there's anything out there that's gonna be softer shooting than this. It literally feels like a different caliber shotgun. So we got the shot timer back out here today, and what I wanna do is load up each of these shotguns and just see what the speed difference is. So I'm not gonna load these full, the Versamax is taking all my ammo. So we're gonna do four rounds in each of these shotguns and just see with the pump versus semi-auto you know, what is the actual speed difference. Now, I'm not claiming to be some expert pump action shotgun shooter. There are guys out there who can literally blaze through these magazine tubes, but just for the average person, how big is the difference? So we're gonna start with the pump action supernova. That didn't feel too bad. Um, it definitely didn't feel like the fastest time in the world. But I hope you can see that. That is a 2.21. So under two and a half seconds for the Benelli Supernova. Now let's try the Versamax. I think it's going to be quite a bit faster just because you obviously don't have to pump and the recoil on this thing allows me to get back on target quite a bit quicker. So four rounds out of the Versamax. I'm gonna have to remember not to try and pump the gun this time. <laughs> Yeah, less than half the time 
that it took me with the pump. Again, there's a glare, but that is a 1.04. So just over one second to get through four shots from a 12 gauge shotgun, that's pretty crazy. And like I said, with the pump, there's people out there with semi-autos too who could do that two or three times faster than me. So pretty big difference. So now we're gonna try something that I've never really done before, but this sounded like a ton of fun. By the way, look at the little pile of fun we have right here. It looks like that Versamax was ejecting all them shells pretty much in the exact same spot. So that's pretty cool. But uh, we have the shot timer out here, like I said, and I've kind of set up a little shooting course, I guess, that I wanna try to run with both of these guns and see what the time difference is between the pump and the semi-auto. And for the whole thing, I will be wearing my GoPro on top of my hat so that you guys will kind of get a first person view of it because obviously we won't be able to capture all of it on the camera. But we're gonna start right here where the tripod's at. And first we have two 12 ounce sodas on my little board down here. And we're gonna shoot our 12 ounce sodas. By the way, there's a swarm of bees down here from me shooting these sodas, which I guess is normal for February. I'm gonna go ahead and stay away from that. Um, but after we shoot the two 12 ounce sodas, we're gonna turn quickly this way. And I have a little shoot and see target that I stuck to our metal door right here. We're gonna pop that thing, keep running around this way. Again, I'll be running kind of as fast as I can. So we're gonna run around this way, out like this. And if you see in the burn pile right there, my brother-in-law apparently uh, is getting rid of a couch. So we're gonna take two shots at that couch. I guess kinda maybe why I'm moving take two shots at the couch and then that will be the last two rounds in the magazine. So after that, I'm gonna continue this way while I'm reloading, kind of run to the next station. I imagine I'll get to this before I actually finish the reload cause I'm probably suck at shotgun reloads. But I have a sporting clay right here on the ground. We're gonna stop and take out the two sporting clays that I have at the bottom of each of those barrels and then quickly turn and take out the sporting clay that I have right there in that tree. After that, we should have about two rounds left in the shotgun, and we're gonna make our way down here to my truck. Again, running, 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 running. And come behind the truck right here, crouch down, and kind of lean out around the truck and take our final two shots at my steel torso plate right there. So this should be interesting because uh, this is definitely not the kind of stuff that I do, but it just sounded like a lot of fun. And with the pump versus semi-auto debate we're kind of doing in the video, uh, I thought this would be a good way to test the times of the shotguns. But we're gonna have 10 rounds total, and there's obviously gonna be one reload in there. Now I could just load the Versamax to 10, but I don't think that's fair. I'm gonna do four plus one um, in both of these since that's what the banana does and that way we have to incorporate one reload into each of these runs. I'm out of breath just from showing you guys the course so uh, this is going to be pretty funny. <laughs> All right, go ahead and put the GoPro on. I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see everything through this GoPro and kind of give you like a what I'm seeing kind of view so looks like it should be at the right angle. My ear pro on and we're going to start with the pump. I got five shells in my pocket and I'm gonna put five in the magazine tube. It's gonna be tough to uh, get these shells out of here because I'm obviously just wearing jeans. I don't have like a shotgun rig or nothing on me. That'd be a lot better, but all right. Get our shot timer here and let's start with the Benelli. Ah, uh, it's kind of tough reaching in the pocket of my jeans like that. I think the sporting clay that was on that tree fell, but I shot it on the ground. Alright. Alright, so we had a couple of hiccups, nothing major, um, but my time was... 
with the Benelli Supernova. So the second soda can up here on the board fell after I shot the first one, but I don't think that affected me too much. I just kind of aimed down and took out the second one. Um, everything else went well. I turned around, shot our target there, blew it off the door. I'll have to replace that. Um, hit the sofa with the two shells that were remaining in the magazine. Walked up here as I was reloading, and that was tough to reach in these tight jean pockets. Uh, trying to get a bunch of shotgun shells out, but I took out the two sporting clays on the barrels here And then when I turned to our tree the sporting clay was gone So it apparently fell into the leaves actually let's walk up and try to find it But either way I saw a piece of a sporting clay on the ground right below it and I just shot that so again That might have added a second or a half a second maybe but nothing too major But yeah, here is the sporting clay that I was supposed to shoot. So for the next run, I'll probably just put that on the ground right there and take it out. And then I ran up to behind my truck and all that went really well. So 44.27 seconds with the Benelli. I'm out of shape. I gotta say, I don't think that was too bad uh, with the Benelli for my very first time doing it. It did wear me out. <laughs> all right, we got five rounds in the Versamax and I got another five in my pocket. Got our shot timer and GoPro's on. All right. So much faster already. This one definitely does pinch your thumb more than the Benelli does. Ugh. Jeans were a bad idea. So, I didn't realize that I was in the worst shape of all time. Make sure my GoPro was running. Yep. All right, cool. So, with the Remington Versamax, we actually got a 39.96. So, I think eight seconds shorter than we got with the Benelli and I actually felt like the reloading with the Versamax was adding even more time because it's just a, a different gun to reload. I'm really used to the Benelli and that shell lifter stays up whenever you're loading the magazine tube. With the Remington it doesn't and so it's just pinching the crap out of your thumb every time. Obviously there's ways to you know get used to that kind of stuff but that was a lot of fun. So I do not know what the footage looks like on the GoPro. Obviously you guys have seen that already. Hopefully it wasn't too shaky. Um, but that was definitely a lot of fun. And I can't say I'm surprised that the Versamax was the faster of the two guns, not only because it's a semi-auto, but just the recoil that it has is pretty much nothing. For a 12 gauge, that's definitely the softest shooting 12 gauge shotgun that I've ever shot. So now I gotta figure out a way to buy one of these as well because uh, I fell in love with that gun today. I really did, it is so much fun. So I wanna thank Turtle Lake Tactical one more time for sending out the Remington Versamax. Um, I'm gonna shoot the crap out of this thing and we're gonna make a lot of videos with it before I have to send it back because uh, I really do not want to do that. So we're going to make a bunch of videos with it and I look forward to it. It is probably the coolest shotgun that I've ever shot. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. If any of you own Remington Versamaxes or similar semi-automatic shotguns or if you have a pump and a semi-auto, what your opinion is on it. I got to say, with the reliability that this gun supposedly has, I would pick it every single time over any pump action shotgun out there. It's just you can't underestimate the value and a semi-automatic gun. There's a reason that semi-automatic rifles are so popular, and when shotguns can become that reliable too, I think that there's a million advantages that they have over the pumps. Pumps are great because you're in charge of cycling the action, and no matter what you put in it, it will work if you do your part, but 
people seem to leave out a lot of the time that you can mess up you know racking a pump action shotgun it happens all the time people short stroke them or get kind of fumbled up whenever they're trying to rack the pump so it is possible but if you know what you're doing and you practice on it a lot um, obviously a pump is going to be the more reliable of the two but apparently nowadays some of these uh, semi-autos are getting pretty reliable as well so let me know in the comments if you guys like the video if you'd like to help support the channel you can visit my patreon account there will be a link for that down in the description box as well as up here on the screen thank you to all of you who do support the channel it means the world to me and it helps me continue continue to make these videos that I love making. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pick up these pop cans that I shot because there is a swarm of bees on them. I mean there's at least a thousand bees out here. I don't know if you guys are going to see this on camera because they're so small but they're everywhere. There's hundreds on these three or four cans right here. Literally. There's one on my camera. <laughs> all right. I'm not scared of bees, but I'm definitely not about to go into a swarm of a thousand of them either because they will jack you up.